The discovery of molecular monolayers is quite a peculiar story. Molecular monolayers are films on surfaces that are just one molecule thick. Nowadays they find many applications as for instance as water repellent surface coatings, as biosensors, as drug carriers or for water cleansing. The story began on a sea journey in 1757 when Benjamin Franklin noticed that the waves behind two of the accompanying ships were smooth while those behind his own and the rest of the ships were rough. He called the attention of the ship's captain to his remarkable phenomenon and later reported the captain's contemptuous reply in a letter to a friend. The captain said, the cooks have I suppose been just emptying their greasy water through the scuppers which has greased the sides of those ships a little. Franklin thought that it was much more likely that the oil was having an effect on the waves rather than the ships, but wisely kept his thoughts to himself. He tested this idea on and off over the next 17 years, culminating with the experiment he performed on a pond. This video here demonstrates Franklin's observation. The wind was ruffling the water when he tried pouring a teaspoon of olive oil onto the surface. In a letter to his friend William Brownrigg, he wrote later, The oil, though not more than a teaspoon, produced an instant calm over a space of several yards square, which spread amazingly and extended itself gradually, until it reached the lee side, making all of that quarter of the pond perhaps half an acre as smooth as a looking glass. Franklin thought that he had discovered a method for calming rough seas and kept proposing the method thereafter even though his later large-scale experiment in northwest England produced nothing more than the world's first oil spill. What he had in fact done was develop the first method to, for measuring the size of a molecule. Franklin didn't realize what he had really done. He didn't even know that molecules existed. Nevertheless, his experiments keep turning up in modern-day examination papers, usually with the volume of the teaspoon chosen so as to get the right answer. The plain fact is that we don't know exactly how big Franklin's teaspoon was. What we know is that the film of oil, such as that which he described, keeps on spreading until it is just one molecule thick, but does not spread further because the molecules in the film are held together by van der Waals forces. If the volume of the oil and the area of the film are known, the thickness can be calculated. A hundred and sixteen years later, Lord Rayleigh repeated Franklin's experiment in a sponge bath of extra size. Using carefully measured volume of oil and molting pieces of camphor, to mark the boundaries of the film, he concluded that the thickness of the film was 1.6 micromillimeters in modern unit, 1.6 nanometers. The key step in turning Franklin's and Rayleigh's experiment into a proper scientific tool for studying the shape and size of surface active molecules was taken in 1891. The very next year, by one of the very few women scientists of the time, the German Miss Agnes Pockers, who discovered that a surface of a surface film of such molecules could be compressed by a sliding barrier. Agnes Pockers designed a rectangular tin trough and filled it with water to the brim. She placed a thin strip of tin on the surface of the water to divide the water surface in two halves. Then she used a light balance with a sliding weight to measure the surface tension. She then added a droplet of detergents onto the surface and allowed the oil to spread. Her astonishing observation was that the surface tension dropped when the oil contaminated surface area was decreased. With the help of Lord Rayleigh, her observations were then later published in the scientific journal Nature. The person who first recognized why detergent molecules behave in this way was Irvine Langmuir, a scientist at the General Electric Company in Schenectady, New York. He began by studying molecules on solid surfaces, but eventually turned his attention to liquid surfaces, where in the early 1930s he quickly realized that detergent-type materials prefer to reside at the surface of water because their molecules have chemically different ends. One end, called the hydrophilic, water-loving end, is chemically similar to water and has a preference for being in water. The other end, called the lipophilic, oil-loving end, is chemically similar to oil and prefers an oily environment. The peculiar structure of detergent molecules makes them surface active. If shaken up in water, they will move to the surface where they sit like feeding ducks with their hydrophilic heads in the water and their high oily tails sticking up in the air. As many detergent molecules as possible will seek to occupy the surface, jostling for position and eventually becoming packed together as closely as they can manage. It was not until 1935 though that a working scientific instrument based on the principle discovered by Pockels was built by Langmuir and another woman scientist, Dr. Catherine Blodgett, 
But neither Blanchett's nor Pockel's contribution is acknowledged in the modern name for the instrument, which is simply called a Langmuir trough. The Langmuir trough provided two vital pieces of information. The first came from the change in area as the barrier was moved, which told the experimenter how closely the molecules are packed. The second piece of information came from the change in surface tension, registered by how far the spring-mounted hanging plate was pulled down, as the film was compressed which gave a measure of the work needed to push the surface molecules together, and hence gave information about the forces between those molecules. For ch charged surface active molecules, the net force is repulsive. Given enough room, the molecules will get as far away from each other as possible, like relatives at a wedding. A remarkable observation of such monolayers was their analogous behavior to bulk of materials. While compressing the monolayer, different phase phases can be observed. An uncompressed layer behaves just like a gas, where the molecules have much space to move around. Upon further compressing, a condensation to a liquid can be observed. The liquid-like detergent molecules are more constrained and move around less. Compressing this liquid monolayer even more allows us to observe a transition to a solid-like state of the monolayer. Here, the packing density reaches a limit that depends on the shape and size of the individual molecules. A typical detergent molecules has a cross-sectional area of about 0.25 square nanometers.